Hi, I'm Michael Cruz Kane. I'm here with Richard Ridge of Broadway World, and we are talking about Sorry for Your Loss, which is my show at Audible Theater's Manetta Lane, April 28th to June 4th. I hope you will come. The show is frankly amazing, and I am hot and nice, and you will like it. I am so excited to be sitting with you here during a break in your rehearsal. How excited are you to be bringing your new show to Audible Theater? I am uh, very excited. One, a one to 10, absolute 10, possibly 11 sometimes. It's been so far an incredible process. The people at Audible are so supportive and the show is amazing. Okay, so I have friends who saw this already down in Pittsburgh. Okay. I, told, I think I told you that before we got started. They love this show. Yes. So take me back to the beginning. How did you come about to put this all together? So um, the show itself starts out of like a personal tragedy. And um, it was something that I wrote about, uh, you know, sort of intermittently. Uh, and on the 10 year anniversary of the tragedy, I tweeted this tweet and it went like, really viral, um, you know, thousands and thousands of comments and retweets, et cetera. Twitter sent me a, a, a photo of the tweet because they named it one of their tweets of the year. And once I saw there was so much interest in this, in, in the idea of grief, which I had thought was something people needed to keep secret, it led me to the idea that maybe people would appreciate someone talking about it more publicly. And that's why I started doing this. Because it's something we don't talk about a lot. I mean, grief is one of those things everybody says, oh, I'm so sorry for your loss. Yeah. Or they send you a card and then everybody moves on. Yes, that's exactly right. People yes, talk in, um, they talk in like a weird voice when they find out about it, or they struggle to come to terms with something that's happened to you. So a lot of, a lot of the time, if something awful happens to you and you tell someone else about it, that person gets so sad that you don't have a chance to feel bad about it because you've destroyed them with the idea that sad things can happen. So I'm just trying to help people who have experienced grief feel more comfortable talking about it openly and help people who haven't prepare for the idea that morbidly, we're gonna die, bro, it's gonna happen. You, me, th those guys, everybody back there, it's all 100% of people I think so far have died except for the ones who are alive now, who are gonna. So when you first put this up in front of an audience, like just talk about their reaction, and because people love this show. Uh, well, the receptions have been amazing. It's been a blessing. I'm like very humbled and honored to have people not only enjoy the show, but also message me afterwards or wait after the show to talk to me about things that have happened in their own lives. And I think in its best case, on its best days, it has been a show that has help people talk about something that they have always wanted to talk about. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Audible Theater. I mean, they do the coolest stuff. I mean, this is the middle of their fifth season down here at the Minetta Lane. You're gonna fall in love with appearing on that stage. Yeah. I mean, just how cool it is being a part of their family and what they do. Well, it's been like utterly amazing from start to finish. There's incredible support and being involved, like sort of in a long line of things that have happened as part of Audible Theater at Minetta Lane. There have been so many shows that like you look up and see posters or pictures that they have of them and you're like, oh wow, I'm gonna be, some, the next person's gonna come in and see that I was here. And it's crazy to be included uh, in that long list. But the great thing is they record this and then it's sent out into the Audible world where there's millions of people who listen to Audible and they'll be able to hear this anywhere in the world, what that means to you. Well, I hope that it helps people. Like that's sort of the point of the whole thing. So the more people that get to hear it, if it's good, which it is, they will hopefully be moved by it. Like that's, that's, my, that's my goal. And I hope that everyone who is so inclined listens to it on Audible, but I really hope they also come to see it because there are elements of it visually that are beautiful, I hope in a different way than the elements that exist audibly. When I, when I first started doing it, um, I was using like pictures of my family, etc., that I had sort of cobbled together in a disgusting PowerPoint presentation. And now I'm working with a full team of artists to support every single choice that I make. And what is truly amazing about it is that these people are so gifted that when I suggest something, they're able to take that and go, you actually want this other thing and present it to me. And I'm like, oh, you're right. I didn't even know I don't speak uh, the language of design as brilliantly as all the people who are helping me, so I'm very lucky to have that. Yeah. So I know you're an actor, writer, and comedian. 
Um, you're up there by yourself. I'm sure it's something you're used to, but this is, is it, is it fun being up there by yourself? I mean, now that you're doing this, I mean, I've spoken to many stars over the years, like Ray Fiennes and Vanessa Redgrave about, they say it's scary and exhilarating all at the same time, like being up there by yourself. Sure. Is it like that for you? Well, first of all, I love being put yeah. alongside Ray Fiennes and Vanessa Redgrave. That's sort of, I think of them as my peers. <laughs> and uh, in a way, and I, I don't think of it as by myself actually, because I, and I'm not, I hope this answer isn't too lame or whatever, but I think of it as with the audience. Like this is a show that we are gonna do together. And I think something that maybe makes this show different than a lot of other shows that you might see off Broadway or on Broadway is that there is sort of a constant communication between me and the audience and a lot of like what they bring to the show, I will be giving back to them and so forth. It's a feedback loop that is hopefully lovely and yeah. not a vicious cycle. I think the thing that people enjoy about the show is that it touches on a subject, grief, yeah. that they are not used to hearing about at all, or particularly in the context of comedy. I think you sort of think of grief as something that is like monolithically, deeply and profoundly sad, and it can be and often is, but also you still remain a human being. So people who have had horrible things happen to them, they laugh, they get mad, they get frustrated, they get Horny. They get all the things that you that you regular people get that regular people have. So um, it is, I think, for the people who see the show, a relief to be to have the subject treated with some humanity and with not as much reverence as it might normally get. What do you hope people take away after seeing this performance of "Sorry for Your Loss"? If there's anything that people would take from this performance, I would hope that it would be that you can be a full person who also feels sad, and that sadness by itself does not preclude all the other feelings. So we can have intense, profound, awful, and terrible feelings, and also make space for feelings that are incredible and wonderful, and not be afraid to talk about what seems like a um, dichotomy there. Yeah. Well, once again, Michael Cruz Kane, sorry for your loss, We'll be playing at the Audible Theater from April 28th yes. to June 4th. Yes. And tickets are available at audible.com. Indeed they are.